All right, guys, so the uh, Clasio number teeth are in. Just came in today, and this is doesn't look great. Some holes right here. I just want to document everything. Uh, let me see underneath here. Just fine. Let me cover my address here. Uh, that's the uh, leather I got, Ridge Line. And let's see what's inside. Let's see what I'm getting for $600. I've got invoice here, I'm sure. All right, so they give you a tool manual and what comes in the. Uh, in the box. And where are my heated seats? Looks legit. So, just let me double check, have everything, because I won't be installing this until when it gets warmer. And this is the armrest, and it's a strap. God damn it. I was hoping there'd be no strap, but there's a strap. That's unfortunate. This is, at least the rear, the rear seats. Um, Cup holder doesn't have a strap. This I'm pretty sure you can probably cut it and put it underneath the cup holders, which is good. More headrests, headrests, headrests. All right, guys. So I may have skipped a few steps and showing you guys how to install the um, the leather seats or the Clasio seats on the sport model. Um, pretty much all, all I did was I installed the headrests. Um, you see we're missing there those are finished by the way those are probably the hardest part from what it seems like my hands are, are sore um now it's on to the covers for the seat itself um so it depends on your expectations and what you want for your car so my only gripe with this product is that when you lift these seats up right the strap is going to be exposed so being that it's winter right now i can't really invest too much time um modifying the product uh being that's cold so once winter is over i'm gonna try to take this pack of panel off and uh tuck the, the cables and ties behind this molding right here and then put everything back in for more of an oem look uh, as you can see right here you can easily do that um so that's what i'm trying to go for because like i said half the time my seats are up and this is basically a bin I put stuff in here, so I don't want to see the strap. Um, so, but it's it's a compromise on my end, being that it's only a certain amount for the product itself. But it looks really good, uh, like this right here. That looks pretty damn decent. All right, so all right, guys. So I guess I spent almost an hour and ish popping this rear seat off, throwing over the uh, leather cover, slide it on, put the back seat up. And then basically finish uh, finessing the leather behind the, the seats. So don't even try to work around this. It's just easier to just pop the chair off, sleeve in the chair, pop it back on, and just finishing up the sides, putting it in, tucking it in, and uh, yeah, you'd be all set. So the fit and finish of this leather is pretty nice. Um, even like in here, I was impressed, like how OEM it looks, you know, prior to my posts on, uh, the, the Ridgeline form, my concern was that the strap was going to be an issue. Let me show you guys, uh, it's not going to be, uh, an issue, uh, with black on black. Cause that beige demo sheet, uh, that the, uh, the manufacturer emailed me in, that wasn't the best, like, uh, Example of how this look installed. Uh, let me find. Let me find a uh, pan, uh, the manual real quick. Okay. All right. So this is the manual right here. It shows pictures of it. So when I ask, on email with the uh, customer service, the CSR, 
about how the, how the rear seats look because I was hoping that it would be tucked underneath the plastic here, but it doesn't. You can see straps going down and then a string going across. Now, the initial thought is that black on tan, that looks terrible. You know, it's, it's the fitment looks horrible. Uh, everything is exposed here and there. And, I'm, and that might be the case because I just installed the seat right here. And that looks good. Looks good, looks good. Now, the one thing that you want to be aware of is that, is that the locking mechanism for this chair now is, is hard because now you're applying almost an eighth of an inch here and here from the foam. So you really got to like push it into lock. So like before, you, it'll click right in. Now you got to force it in real quick. And this is how it looks like um, on this side. It's it's not a terrible look, but again, over over the summer, I'll probably pop this panel off just to sleeve this wire behind the panel and along with this strap right here. Uh, that way it'd be a cleaner look. The only, only issue that I would recommend you guys after watching this video is that be careful when you guys stretch the leather around these uh, notches right here. Your first try, you might tear the, the leather, which I did. Um, just enough where it bothers me, but you, obviously you can't see it now with this on. Um, so just, just try, just work your way with the back seat first. That way you have, uh, experience going to the next one and the next one and the next one. So the only reason why I start with the back is because of other seats. I mean, my heated seats, my heating pads aren't in yet. So I'm trying the back first to see how it is. And then tomorrow, hopefully it'll come today and tomorrow I'll pop it. I'll, I'll do the wiring work and uh pop in the, the other seats and i'm all set so but again i really do uh so with this order here this is real leather right here but on the sides are um pseudo or fox leather this right here is the real part um it feels different this feels almost like sandpaper compared to this this is really smooth so i'll recommend this uh this kind of order versus like a suede finish. If you look at the demo for the tan, it doesn't look that great. Suede and then the fox leather right there. So yeah, so my fingers now, this is my second day doing this. The first day is doing the hard part, which is all the headrests. Um, so my hands are messed up. Everything, every every inch of my hand is just messed up. Just doing the rear seats, the headrests, and then this seat so far. So just be aware. But the outcome is amazing. It looks great. Let me show you guys everything. But yeah, this is highly recommended. You know, for the price, I love them. You know, I was skeptical at first with the string and whatnot, but just the way it looks, I love it. Now I can just lotion my leather, have the leather smell good. Let's see that dusty fabric. Um, I mean, I don't mind this, but again, the white stain is kind of annoying. I tried waterproofing the fabric, but it doesn't really help. So uh, this is, I love it. Uh, now I get heated seats now, which I really wanted from day one with this truck. So basically I have everything an RTO model have now. I have the Navi system, the subwoofer, the leather, the Bluetooth. This is decked out, so. All right, so after about almost two hours now, I got the seats up and finished. Back seat, bottom of the seat is all tied in. I just basically staple the, the slack so nothing is like floating around. Um, but overall, again, like I said, it's not a bad look. Same thing as over there, as I mentioned, there is so much padding here that the, lock, the, the locking mechanism is struggling. So when you fold it up, you gotta slam it hard for it to lock. And then same thing uh, when you wanna unfold it, you gotta apply pressure towards the uh, the rear end of the car and then pop the latch. Cause you don't wanna put, you don't wanna stress these uh, latches too much. So uh, that's the only issue with these uh, covers is that as thickness and the locking mechanism is struggling. Otherwise, they're great. So let me, uh, give me one second. Let me push this in real quick. And hold on. All right. So that's a good amount of force you got to push in to... But like I said, I'm going to try to keep these uh, down from now on. 
I said, well, they need them. Um, but yeah, it looks great. So. Okay, so my first issue is this is the armrest for the front driver. And it's weird how they did this because I can't lock my armrest because of the excessive fabric here. And I can't open it without like, without sliding it forward and then unlatching it. This strap gets in the way. So this is a poor design on their end. So I'm just gonna cut the piping here and do it as if you guys would replace your leather uh, OEM armrest. I'm just gonna cut this and tug it underneath this piece right here, underneath the fabric here, and screw it back down to, to lock it because this right here is not a smart design. So, yeah. So I guess I'm scrapping the warranty on this. <laughs> I just cut the, the sling right here and the, the pipe and I took the old factory fabric out, swap. I tried keeping it, but because the fabric gave it so much movement that it slipped right out. So I just took this apart, put this in, use some tape, tape it in place. And the plastic trim right here has some teeth and there's a channel right here. So when it comes down, you tighten it down with the screws, actually like force the fabric, the leather into the channel and lock it in place. This is exactly how you, you would replace your armrest. So I, I just didn't think that the, the cover um, design worked too well from Clasio. So just if you, if you do want to do this right, just cut the pipe, um, cut the sling. Uh, make sure you cut as little as possible because you want more fabric. I did struggle. Uh, uh, having slack on both ends. I had to really stretch the leather out to make it conform. Um, so, but yeah, it's it's solid now. It looks OEM, so. All right, so this is the uh, view from the front seat. This is the passenger seat right here. This is what you get. Looks pretty darn cool, right? Looks pretty good. Um, some of these wrinkles right here, supposedly if you add heat to it, you would remove it um but i'm not too worried about that um yeah so but you can see right here where the piping is we just tug tuck that underneath the plastic trim right here locks in place and as i mentioned earlier there's noodles these round noodles so going across this piece of leather right here you can tuck behind this plastic panel right here and locks both sides in two straps going in the back or front to back lock those in and uh, you're pretty much all set. So uh, another shot of this. Again, I cut the piping, tuck, I took it behind the plastic trimming, and then this looks pretty legit. So I love it. I love it. All right, in the process of installing the wire harness for the seats, the heated seats, took the whole center console out, running wires down the channel to the driver's side. Just wanna show you this image. It's a lot of space with this gone, you know. Imagine like a whole customized like touch pad here or something like that. Eh, that's pretty nice. All right, guys. So I just want to wrap this video up right now. Um, I got the switches installed. They're not really even, uh, but it's only really bothering me from this angle. So they're these buttons when you when you draw them, they're pretty sturdy. I was afraid when I'm pushing these uh, heated buttons in, I was gonna snap them, but it, it held up pretty well. I use a three quarter bit uh, and then kind of shave the the back end of this uh, actual button right here. And I just, just freaking force it in and, and, and hold, it's holding by friction right now. It's pretty good. Um, so this, what this is, you push down for low and you push up for high. So it takes roughly around six minutes for it to basically, for me to feel it at least. Um, and then maybe around 10 to 12 minutes for it to reach operational temperature, meaning it's going to be like super hot. Uh, I think it's, I think it's rated for 110 degrees. Um, so, but yeah, it, it, it works. I love it. Uh, especially with, I completely forgot about this, but especially during wintertime, these seats, leather seats are really cold. So, uh, 
it is good to basically leave this on uh if you're a remote car starter it'll be great a great combination you leave it on remote start your car by the time you get in your car everything's warm and cozy one thing to note is that this is my fourth day with the leather seats i have not yet broken these seats in yet it's really if you can see right here it doesn't really cup your back it's pretty flat across uh there is some room obviously to for it to compress um i'm on the driver's seat right now and it feels like i'm sitting on a uh i wouldn't say a, a board uh but there is you do lose a bit of that 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 the bolster right here that basically holds you in so that is my only gripe with this is that um because the leather is still not fitted yet so here's an fyi on that but the seats in back i think is comfortable i drove an hour and i have no back issues so my next upgrade will basically the steering wheel i try to figure out if a company can make a leather like a something like this on here for me to grip that'd be nice i got these ordered right here uh on ebay it's coming in uh it, it may match it's, it's just, i mean it's just black leather i don't think it's gonna be a different variation in, t in color tone um so i'm not too worried about that but i got these going for me uh next uh when it gets warmer obviously uh rears i'm not gonna worry about that it's just a front for me full contact leather here and here will be ideal and some new uh leather for the steering wheel i want the legit one where it actually goes underneath not the the stitch around wrap right here where you can see the the, the finish here um i'm looking into that right now there was a company that you guys posted up they do not unfortunately do not support uh gen one ridgeline yet as of right now hopefully with you guys um constantly emailing them they will provide some kind of uh variations of their product for this gen so but yeah i just want to leave you guys with that uh note on the heated seats and then where i'm going next with this fridge line and uh this that pretty much wrap up this video uh for this leather seat upgrade uh segment for the car